Hello everyone and welcome to Snap Take. Today we are here to look at the question of should you open for Ajax? And if you read that thumbnail, I'm going to tell you right at the start, I think that Ajax is going to be the sleeper card of the season, but I'm not sure if that means you should open for him. That's going to be a really long discussion, but before we get there, I'd like to invite you to sub, like, and comment. Please hit those buttons. We really do appreciate it. It helps us grow an absolute ton and in the process you get seven days a week of marvel snap videos and and you get the biggest giveaways in marvel snap we have given away 13 season passes thus far this season we're giving away one a week for the rest of the season in each video every single day i'm going to leave a random question at some point in the video you answer that question and you are entered to win a season pass i'm not sure which video i'm pulling that winner from but there will be one season pass given away um, from one of these videos, I'm not telling you which, in each for the rest of the week. Before we get to the new deck, some of you will not get this card. Basically, no matter what, you don't have the resources, so here's another deck that you can play. This is Silky's Man-Thing Blazing. I think that this is a really, really cool list. Uh, I checked it out. It's very powerful. It has good gameplay into almost everything. Um, it can struggle a little bit into bounce, but, like, good. But it, um, it basically just says your opponent doesn't get to do what they want. They're going to lose power. They're going to struggle. This is um, a list created by both Silky Johnson, also known as Space Wax, and Roram Plays, who you can find on twitch.tv slash Roram Plays. White Widow and Juggernaut are changed as Valentine and Mobius as two different versions of this list exist. Um, however, if you don't have Widow or Valentina, you can replace them with Jeff or Angela. Nebula and Titania make some sense, too. U.S. Agent and Man-Thing are absolutely needed here. Another thing to note is if Luke Cage actually takes over the meta in a day or two because of, um, because of the growth of Ajax, then you're going to want to be adding either Rogue or... Um, you're going to want to add either Rogue or a second card's name is uh, Red Guardian in place of Juggernaut as a way to take care of that. All right, here's how you play it. So you want to play for two lanes, so be very careful to not try and compete for three. You don't go tall enough to do so. Um, so turn one, you pass. There's no one drop in the list. Turn two, Ravona over Widow. Ravona is insanely important here. Turn three, Goblin or Luke. I would still probably play Ravona. If the opponent seems to be going wide, you can also drop a Juggernaut here to try and push a punch of the stuff if you get lucky into one lane. And if you have one lane clogged, it's just so much easier to win this game. Turn four, uh, Man-Thing into whatever lane they have the most cheap stuff in. Turn five, you would really like Sarah. You're fine playing Hobgoblin, but you'd like Sarah. And then turn six, you're doing some combo of US Agent, Shang-Chi, Goblins, and Luke. You can Shang and a Green Goblin. You can um, US Agent for one and a Hobgoblin. Um, sorry, and a Hobgoblin for four, right? And then you still have an extra for a White Widow or something, so on and so forth. You get the idea. And that's how you win games with this list. It is, again, a lot of power. Hopefully you don't need both U.S. Agent and Shang-Chi. The list works much better when you only need to play one, and Man-Thing can sort of take out another lane for you. That's another benefit of Juggernaut. But again, if you are seeing a lot of opposing Luke Cage and you need an answer, that Juggernaut becomes Rogue or Red Guardian, and you're perfectly fine. Uh, Sage is, sorry, your other lane-winning end-of-the-game power. Like, you can go U.S. Agent, Green Goblin, Sage after Asera and just put a ton of power um, you're basically playing a 111 at that point, a 2-6 uh, because it's negative 3 on their side, and then whatever the hell nonsense Sage ends up for just an absolute ton of power. This list is very cool, very powerful, and I urge you to check it out. Hey, Gwenpool has been out for a week. So Gwenpool is a 4-6 on reveal. Pick a random card in your hand three times. Give it plus 2 power each time. And I think Gwenpool is a must-buy card. I think Gwenpool is already better than Gilgamesh was, including when Gilgamesh was a meta card. Gwenpool has a ton of different shells that are all really, really effective. Um, Gwenpool works well in Bounce, it works well in Brood decks, it works well in Surfer decks, it works well in Patriot decks. I think that um, it's got some several just good stuff shells that are really good. We should have known this would be effective with Brood because when um, we forge Brood, we just we get so far ahead, right? Well, this is like Forge Brood on steroids. It also works amazingly with Mysterio. I think that Gwenpool is one week in a must-buy card that I don't see getting significantly worse. Please go grab yourself some Gwenpool. 
If you'd like to see gameplay for the decks in this video and the deck um, we just talked about, please check out the stream team. Today is Monday, so the great Gregor2424 will be playing decks from the video. Please do check it out. There should also be a video from King of Canada for yesterday's video. Yesterday's video, we looked at the top five decks of last season, literally numbers one through technically six, because I couldn't find the exact number five of the infinite leaderboard last season and what they played to rise to the very top of Marvel Snap. All right, last chance review for Hydra Bob, and then we will finally get to Ajax, I promise. So my Hydra Bob last chance review is don't buy the car. It's not as bad as everyone says. It's significantly better than Martyr. It's a bad card. It's not a good card. It's just don't buy it. Please don't buy it. Pretty please don't buy Hydra Bob. You don't need it. Good. I don't know how to be clearer than that. All right. Ajax, 716, he is a 5-7 now. He was buffed over the weekend to a 5-7 pre-release, which is Second Ender's way of saying we want him to be good and he was not performing as a 5-5. That's worth noting. He is a... Uh, everything's a serious 5 card now, right? So he's an ongoing card. Plus one power for each card in play, afflicted with negative power, which means he can get up to like a 528, which is about as big as anything in the game can get. Um... The day after he comes out, this very cool, because I don't like his base design at all. I think he looks ridiculous. But this uh, Venomized variant is very cool, and that comes out the day after. So I'm a content creator. I get all the cards. That does not mean you should. Um, I will be buying Ajax immediately and then, um, oh, then spending some gold on this Ajax variant because I like it better than the Ajax variant, who is basically RoboCop. Tell me that's not RoboCop. The Spotlight Ajax is RoboCop. Uh, Ajax comes with Darkhawk and Beta Ray Bill. Some people decide what to get a lot based on variants. I've got 35 spotlight caches, so I am opening for this very cool looking Darkhawk and this very cool looking Beta Ray Bill. Um, and I am not opening for this Ajax because I like the Venomized one much, much more. But these are the spotlights coming with it. We will also review both Darkhawk and Beta Ray Bill before the end of this video. All right, synergies. And before we get there, the question is, do you think for a card like Ajax, it is better to go all in with the negative synergies or try and fit him into a shell where you just run him in a small package with a card like Hazmat? Which do you think is better? And that's your way to, if this is the video, enter the season pass giveaway. All right, ready? Um... This first thing to note, I've seen a ton of people misread this. This is an ongoing ability, not an on reveal. That is hugely important in terms of fundamentally everything. It means you can play it, then play Hazmat. Mystique can copy this, and then you get two of this card. And if you can make it a 28, that seems pretty good. A 28 and a 21 seems like it's going to win a fair number of games. But also Rogan and Chantress are counters now, as is Echo, and Echo is showing up more and more. So it's worth knowing and paying attention to that. It has synergy with everything that gives negative power, and here's everything I can think of that gives negative power. Hyeva Wasp, Thing and Cyclops. Scorpion and the upcoming Cassandra Nova. Man Thing and US Agent, and Hazmat. Plus a bunch of locations like negative zone help, uh, your opponent helling back things will help you, as will playing a Valentina card, so on and so forth. Get the idea? Good. So this is absolutely wrecked. Destroyed does nothing for Luke Cage as an ongoing ability. Luke Cage will fundamentally re remove all of this card's power. That seems bad. While Annihilus um, will say, will destroy a bunch of the negative power if you get it negative enough. Please note, this card counts both your cards and your opponent's cards. So playing it with Luke Cage... Um, so playing with Luke Cage is the exact same power as not playing with Luke Cage. It's just whether your cards have negative power um, that goes on to uh, that goes on to Ajax, or they keep that power themselves. You understand? Like it's the exact same power. It's just it's going to be spread out, or it's going to be on one card. Uh, you also have to determine if you want to run Luke in these decks at all for that. Partially for that reason, and partially because um, Loki is a card in Marvel Snap. And if you're running Luke and they Loki you, then guess what? They have your loop. All right. The first list we're going to look at is, as almost every week, Docti's list. Docti is the king of New Orleans Snap content. If you go check out Docti's channel right now, Docti and I reviewed all of the Series 4 and 5 cards. We did Series 4 and 5 tier list. Cool. So you just type in Docti Marvel Snap. 
Docti has this toxic ongoing control where you're basically just saying um, Ajax is going to be um, like US Agent hits two cards, that's Ajax as a 5 9. Then Man Thing hits two cards, then it's a 5 11. And a 5 11, like we're going to try and go crazy with it, but honestly, it's pretty good. And then if you play Spectrum after that, now you have a 5 13. That seems like it probably wins a lane, right? Um, this list is obviously dangerous in that Loki should eat it for absolute lunch, but you can potentially gene and Cosmo that Loki and just win lots of games that way. We saw this list. This list was meta for a little while, and I think Ajax makes a lot of sense in it. Hell, even Lizard losing his strength should give Ajax an extra pump. Not that that's something you necessarily want to happen. That's trading four for one, but hey, it's once in a while, like an extra power is an extra power. All right, next up we have Rez Snapper, another phenomenal uh, content creator who makes content based around new cards mostly. This is a very cool uh, Pillars of Ajax list. I, this is just saying I'm going to go really big with as many things as I can, right? Hydra Bob is big for one. Martyr's big for a one. Uh, Maximus is the biggest two. Polaris is one of the biggest threes. Gladiator is the biggest three. Crossbones and Caller are the biggest fours, along with Typhoid Mary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get the idea here, right? Then when you hazmat, you still have enough stats to win. So you go Ajax, you play all your big stuff, right? Like you go um, Hydra Bob into Maximus, into um, Gladiator, into hopefully Color Crossbones or even Typhoid, into um, Ajax, into Mystique and Hazmat. And then you win. And then you have Dr. Octopus as sort of a backup plan here. So you can just like pull everything in. So you can Doc Oct um, to pull everything in. Um, and Elaine, you already have a bunch of big stuff in. And then you can Ajax to end the game. Lots of power here. Jimmy Dixon, Jimmy Dickens is writing articles on SnapFan. I didn't know that. But we love Jimmy Dickens. Jimmy's an awesome person. He was in the top four of the Snap Judgments League, and he's coming on the podcast soon. So Jimmy Dickens has this really cool idea. He calls it Jackson Daxter. Um, and I love the idea of Master Mold with this because you um, Master Mold and you Scorpion, those Sentinels in the hand, and then if they have to play them to like get hand space, that's extra power for Ajax. You also obviously have Hazmat. Hazmat's going to be in like all these lists. Green Goblin's really good here. Dr. Octopus helps them fill a lane. Typhoid Mary gives all your stuff negative one power, which is really nice. That's power you're stacking on Ajax. White Widow's at negative four. Lots of power here. Lots of good ways to do things with this list. Junk it up and then make a really big card to win the game. My problem with this list, my little problem with this list is why not run Red Hulk and not what bother with Hazmat? But outside of that, it's great. All right, uh, next up we have Unk's Evolved Ajax. Unk does new Marvel Snap card content every week. Check out Unk Marvel Snap. This one is the high evolutionary build of our bunch. So basically what we're trying to do here is um, you drop Wasp. That's an extra, Now Wasp is giving you an extra power in Ajax. Anything they play that Scorpion is an extra power in Ajax. The two Cyclops cards three thing cards and you just get again we're not trying to make the biggest card ever but if we can get um enough different cards with negative power we can even potentially skip turn five turn five sunspot and go ajax abomination she hulk to end the game that is the hope for this deck very cool list um i'd like to find another way to get uh some negative power in there this might be like the perfect list for hazmat since abomination is here uh this alt list is also going to eventually need a way to handle that damn loot cage uh, although, like, in a few weeks, once everyone forgets Ajax exists, then this list seems great. All right, Toxic Surfer. This is from our friend Gregor2424, or, like, an updated version of his Toxic Surfer, where um, the list had this, like, whole way to win, right? Where it basically goes um, Wong Magic, Wong Surfer Odin, and then it just makes itself a huge brood and shawl, and it can win that way, or it can do, I just got Luke out, and then I went Wong... Um, Hazmat Odin, and I won that way. Well, now we have an alternate win condition because we can do um, we can do Ajax, right? Then we can do Mystique Wong and just get a ton of power that way. So this is just an extra way to get a whole bunch of power on cards and win the game. I don't know if this is better than just running Absorb Man, but I think it's at least interesting and worth checking out. Next up, Obelisk has a negative list. This is another ongoing list. Uh, it's saying I've, I can make my 
Ajax stupidly big with Onslaught. Why the hell wouldn't I? Um, Wave means you can Onslaught early. Spectrum getting that power all over the place. Just a nice little ongoing list. Nothing fancy here, but should be pretty strong. JJ Rolk uh, has this Toxic and Ajax list. This is, again, the lists are fairly similar here. This one is tournament competitive. JJ Rolk sits in the top 100 with off meta stuff all the time. Really, again, strong list. Check out JJ Rolk's list. And we're on to final thoughts. Does Ajax look good? So every new card they release is more or less good. Um, Fastos, it, I mean, I guess, except Hydra Bob. But even Fastos is like, okay. Um, so it's very unlikely that this card is bad. However, immediately, like this week, the meta is just going to add Luke and this card's going to get chased away. When Luke is in decks, it's not worth trying to run the million counters and play the like in and out game with Ajax. However, if Arisham stays meta, Arisham adding Luke means Arisham is very unlikely to draw Luke and you can just run a couple counter cards. And then maybe all of a sudden, this card starts to look wor worth it, except that Arisham gets really tall, so it remains to be seen if this card is tall enough against Arisham to matter. If it is, though, it's going to be great. Uh, this is going to be slept on. I think this card is going to be bad this week. This is literally going to be the worst week of Ajax existence. But later on, as everyone forgets about him within two, three weeks, maybe uh, two, three weeks after Cassandra Nova, because that'll reinsert Luke into decks, two, three weeks after Cassandra Nova, I think this is going to be a cube stealer. I think this is the sleeper card of the season, um, but not until the middle of next season. Does that make sense to everybody? Luke Cage will immediately come in and make this cards feel very bad, but Luke Cage never sticks around forever, and when he doesn't, we're going to have some decks. We're going to have some really shocking high cube rate decks, high win rate decks that run this card and just clean up because people aren't ready for it. Do not buy this card immediately, though. We're going to wait until Friday unless there are other cards, which we know how good they are. We know how good Dark Rock and Beta Ray Bill are, so we're going to review them. So we're, let's get to Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill is a 4-6 Series 5 card. On reveal, shuffle Stormbreaker into your deck, and Stormbreaker is an 0-1 on reveal, double Beta Ray Bill's power. If you're not aware, for some reason, the basic play pattern is you play Beta Ray Bill, then you play Jane Foster, which draws you Stormbreaker, and then you double Beta Ray Bill. Sometimes you play Stormbreaker with Odin, which gives you a 424. Actually, before we talk about Beta Ray Bill's decks, Beta Ray Bill is not the meta card. It's not. It's never going to be the best card in Marvel Snap, but it does give you access to a relatively cheap deck. Thor, Jane, Beta Ray Bill um, is a three-card package that goes in a lot of very good decks. It is very versatile and very powerful. I don't think Thor, Beta Ray Bill should be one of your first Series 5 um, pulls, but it's not a bad one to have. This is... Ha Hammer Pixie, it's, uh, I believe this is actually Gnome's List, but Den shared it here. Um, this is a relatively cheap lift, list, you see what I mean? Like, if you have Pixie, Blink is nice here, but not in any way, shape, or form a requirement. So what you want to do is, like, if you can get Pixie and you can get Beta Ray Bill, then you fundamentally have a list. Red Hole could just be Magneto without anyone caring here, too. So your goal here is to just basically say, I've got a bunch of cheap stuff that I can do things with, right? Um, if I can make myself a, with Pixie, a zero cost Doom or Odin, we're set. And like, because we don't wanna just rely on doing only one thing, we've also got Thor, Beta Ray, Jane. We can also um, blink to try and hit Doom, Odin, Red, Hulk, or Jane, perfectly fine, um, which is really strong. Hopefully you bought blink when blink was a season pass. You should be buying season passes, they're always worth it. The next version is Owie's um, Thor by Night. This is an older list. It's still a very strong one. Again, relatively cheap, right? Like, eh, I guess Sage got more expensive. Sage, I forgot, was in here. White Widow is not a requirement in any way, shape, or form. Nor is Nico Minoru. But you do need Werewolf and Sage. But if you have this, you've got, like, just the Thor package as a way to bounce that Werewolf around. You've suddenly got a 12-power Beta Ray Bill, and you can get a nice big Werewolf. Um... If you go, fundamentally, you go Werewolf, right? Beta Ray Bill, Jane. And then you play um, some ones to bounce the Werewolf along with the Hammers, the Hammer, and Sage, and you win. Tons of power. Very, very fun list. Finally, we have Raven's Lucky Hammers, uh, the cheapest of these lists. Raven did amazingly well with this list for quite a while. This is almost like a Sarah list, Sarah list. Again, you're seeing Blink goes very well with Beta Ray Bill, so if you have Blink, 
it is this is a stronger consideration to buy. Uh, Nebula is not required, nor is Red Guardian. They're just good here as good cards. Uh, you run some tech, you run some powerful cards, and you win games of Marvel Snap. It's not like complicating. Enchantress in this current meta should be Shang-Chi. In the meta when this was mostly played, it was uh, Enchantress because we saw a lot of tribunal -y stuff. But now we're seeing a lot of shang stuff, so Shang-Chi should replace that card. Hopefully that makes sense for everybody and we're clear. But again, Beta Ray Bill, good card in good decks. Not meta, not the best thing to do, but good and a good cheaper option. Next up, we have Darkhawk. Darkhawk is a 5-3, Series 4 card, ongoing plus 2 power for each card in your opponent's deck. Darkhawk is completely, completely must-own. Um, Darkhawk kills Arishem. It is the best card against Arishem in the game. Darkhawk is like a 335, uh, sorry, a 535, and then you copy it with Mystique, and you have a 532, and that usually wins games a snap. Um, it beats Arishem, for sure, and that's incredibly powerful, right? It also is just great in a lot of decks. Darkhawk has been a meta card since it was printed. It was one of the original batches. I think it's the last one that's still a high series of the original cards that were released into Series 5. Um, it, it came down to Series 4, and then when it was going to go to Series 3, they changed that. Darkhawk is a must, 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 must own card. It has literally never not been meta. I keep, they keep making it slightly worse, and it still remains a meta deck. All right, this is a Loki tech deck. This is actually, I know it says Owie, this is Sizer's version, more or less within a card or so, of the Loki list um, that Sizer has been chilling at the top of infinite with. Darkhawk here is a tech card. This list is full of tech cards. Um, Snowguard's Bird is a tech card. Uh, Jeff is a tech card for to get into locations. Cosmo is a tech card. Mobius is a tech card. Um, and Darkhawk is a very specific, uh, Nocturne is another location tech card. And then Darkhawk is a very specific tech card against Arishim. If you can um, Juggernaut cards into Darkhawk's lane as uh, against Arishim, you win. If you can get Cosmo one lane and like that blob and you have priority, they're in a lot of trouble. Super duper strong, very cool list. Um, one of the ways you can play Darkhawk is just as a pure tech card. However, the cards Darkhawk wants to go with are Korg and Rockslide. Korg and Rockslide are, generally speaking, the two most Darkhawkiest of Darkhawk cards. They each give Darkhawk not uh, plus two power at the end of the game, right? So that is very strong. Making Darkhawk stronger is obviously good, and that is one of the goals of playing the card. Against non Arishim decks, and where he's not already stupidly huge, this makes him, generally speaking, about a 5'11", but a 5'11 that comes with disruption. This is W's list. W's one of the best deck builders in the game. It's just a good cards list that is very, very effective. Next up, finally, we have the Zunes number one deck. Zunes is playing the Sarah Surfer list, and because Rock Slide is a three, he threw in um, Darkhawk and Mystique, which also, again, have all that Arisham love. You need Darkhawk because we're in the Arisham meta, but also this list is just really good. I almost never see Arisham nowadays. I'm playing a lot of other things, and Dark, this list beats almost everything. Just having an 11 power card you can play with Surfer, right? You go Brood, um, sorry, you go Brood into, uh, Forge, Brood, Rockslide, Sarah, Darkhawk, Surfer, and you're just like, all right, I'll, I won. That's great. It's a ton of power, and it's really, really effective. Last one, uh, sometimes Darkhawk even goes in Arishem list. Snap Orange got three Infinity Borders with this version of um, Arishem. That runs Darkhawk as a way to say, when I run into counters, I just win them by dropping a Darkhawk. A lot of people are cutting Darkhawk. I know the number one player right now, Crazy, is cutting Darkhawk, but Darkhawk can go in everything. This is a card you want to own. So, should I open this week? I mean, you must have Darkhawk. He's Series 4, but if you need him, just open for him. Beta Ray Bill is a good deck that doesn't require too much high series stuff. I'd open it genuinely for either card and then keep opening for Ajax. Darkhawk is more important than Beta Ray. You can skip Beta Ray. Beta Ray is like an Eye of the Beholder thing. But you should get Darkhawk. If you need Darkhawk, just open for Ajax. If you need just Ajax, please wait. Um, usually on Thursday, Friday, and Monday. I talk to a bunch of top players and do weekend reviews, and then I give you a final review. We're just going to do the um, final review Monday. Fair warning to everyone. Cool. We are only, only, only doing the Monday review this week. Thursday's video on the channel will be by the great game with Flash X, and Friday's video will be by the Pirate King Tucker. They are covering videos for me while I'm away. Uh, I'll be going to the Bahamas with my family for uh, the weekend. So... 
I will not be doing the usual Thursday, Friday, Monday thing, but almost every Thursday, I ask a bunch of top players what they think about the card and report out, and then I give you a Friday weekend mission review. You will not get that this week, although I will uh, check me out on Twitter, Snap JudgeCast, or Discord, and I will still try and tweet my impressions, because I'm not going to fall behind on the game. I just won't be making videos while I'm chilling on the beach. Wait until Friday to buy this card unless you must have that Venomized variant, please, or unless you have, um, unless you need Dark Kong. All good? Questions of the day. And then we're out of here. So the first question is, Caretex Lee wants to know the next card I want to receive the Wolverine treatment, and that is Adam Warlock. I really, really, really love the Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity Saga stuff. Back when Adam Warlock was big, I really love the Annihilation stuff, Annihilation Conquest, and Adam Warlock comes back and joins Guardians of the Galaxy and then ends up disappearing. And um, if he's not going to be good with Arishim, he's never going to be good. So just tear the card down, redesign it as something new, and make it good. Uh, Safety Blade asks why Havoc is the number one Summers brother, and he is not. Cyclops is one of the best characters in Marvel Comics. Grant Morrison has this thing that they say that I really, really love. Um, it's actually said about Nightwing, but it applies to... It might actually be said about Cyclops, but it applies to both of them. Um, everyone, almost all superheroes are sort of making it up as they go along. They're just sort of like stumbling along and hoping for the best. So, uh, both Cyclops and... Nightwing were raised and trained by someone who had already made all the mistakes, and thus they become more effective versions of their mentors. Um, both end up extremely strategically minded and extremely well-liked and respected. Cyclops doesn't always like himself, but others like him. Plus, he's a fascinating character. Meanwhile, Havoc um, spends 80% of his time being possessed. He's got occasional great comic runs, but... Um, yeah, there's that... He's got occasional great comic runs. Like, he was really, really great in X-Factor, but he was, like, totally the straight man there. He's great in um, Havoc and Wolverine Meltdown. That's kind of it. He's just, generally speaking, a character I don't like or resonate with. He is a very cool design. As a kid, he was one of my favorites because I loved his weird little Atom helmet. When you're seven, you like what you like. But I don't think he's the number one Summers brother. If I had to come up with an argument for why he's the number one Summers brother... Um, I honestly don't think I could. He's the best Summer's brother in Marvel Snap, um, where I think Havoc is an absolutely excellent card, and we're going to talk about a Havoc deck in Wednesday's video, so make sure you don't miss that. Here, Nimbus has an idea for a big card that has its downside get mitigated when it's discarded, and that sounds like Strife. So Strife can be like a 6-12. Um, when you play this... Um, destroy um one of your cards at another location right or destroy one of your cards at each other location but when you play this not on reveal when you play this so that if you discard it you just get a 612 i think that would be perfectly fine and sometimes you'll want to play that with like a destroy list which also seems pretty cool right i don't know i think that fits for strife uh i want the card that does that wants to be discarded to be an apocalypse card um so there we also have that cool hey if you like this channel check out our patreon patreon.com slash snap judgments one dollar gets you invited to all of our tournaments ten dollars gets your name on every video so i'd like to say thank you to abigail Gieslin, mandatory burnout cables irregardless david g wingfield dire wolf lab fathor newman good dog gamer this is the way inc i am frostman jay never eat doomer prime dryan kiertix lee Koiray, Pyrofros, The Goat Seeker, Denman Falcon, Quid Pro Joe, Docty, New Marvel Snap Content King, Batnick, Ginger Prime, Philip Rakovich, Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone, Rob Silverman, The Biza, X Force Fiend, Skippy G, Tommy, uh, Tommy Nyquist, winner of Snatch Wrestles League Season 1, The King of Bros, Brett, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Kepsi Hoda, Luna Chris, Archangel 3K, John Q, Lou Antonez, Models, The Mod Supreme, Darth Tater, Remis Atala, Brian Kaufman, Tristan H. Martin, Jason B., J.D. McDonaldino, The Fuzzy Dunlop, Spectrum Mix, Who, Matt H., DJ Mikey Hijinks, No Frickin' Flex, Ocularis, Craig Starry, Seamus Jonesy, Two Ties, Who Genuinely Wore Two Ties, So Cool, The Great Lauren Madevs, The Pirate King Tucker, The Homie Min, and of course, Gunny T, where the T stands for, It's Closing Time. See you tomorrow.